Recently on this channel, we've been discussing many absurd trades. Trades that were so bad that they seemingly collapsed their entire franchise. And these trades would go as far as basically forcing an unintentional rebuild. <clears throat> um, Ottawa Senators, you know what you did. And even though the majority of all trades will eventually have a winner and a loser, it takes years to fully understand the value of that transaction. But there's also been many trades that have mutually benefited both sides. Or like the title of this video says, win-win trade scenarios. And even though they may be pretty rare in today's game, especially with the exchange of star players, and not just minor league deals, win-win trade scenarios do exist. So comment down below if your team has ever had that win-win trade scenario, I'd love to know. And if you haven't already, when you're done this video, of course, go check out part one. Link will be in the description down below. And press subscribe for some more awesome content. Let's get straight into this video. We will start with Tyler Sagan, who was traded for Louis Erickson. Psych. We will start with JT Miller, who was acquired in the second round of the 2019 NHL Draft for Merrick Mazanik and a first and third round pick. And when this trade took place, it was extremely polarizing. Because one side of the fence was like, Vancouver has finished at the bottom of the league for what seems like an eternity, so why would they possibly give up a first round pick? And the other side was like, JT Miller could be the perfect player to fill out the top six. But with that being said, I'd still say the majority thought this trade made no sense. However, it has turned into perhaps the best trade Jim Benning has ever made for the Vancouver Canucks. Because even though they gave up a first round pick, JT Miller this season has developed into a legitimate all-star. As he put up an astounding 72 points in only 69 games. And Miller is a major reason where they are today, as he provides that much needed grit on the Pedersen line. And has the skill and other tangibles to be a great supplementary piece. And as for Tampa Bay, at the time they were in a pretty tight cap situation and they were going to unload Miller regardless. So the fact that they got a first round pick in return, well, that in itself is a win-win scenario. Especially because Miller wasn't being properly utilized in Tampa because of their very impressive roster depth. And with their first round pick, they were able to flip it for Blake Coleman, who has one of the best bang for your buck contracts in the entire NHL, as he is currently sitting at a dismal 1.8 million per season with 20 to 30 goal upside, so just the perfect player on a tight cap space team in Tampa. Next, we have the Dougie Hamilton trade. No, not that one. Definitely not that one. Yes, that one. Because on June 23rd, 2018, Dougie Hamilton was involved in a massive blockbuster deal that sent him alongside of Michael Ferlin and Adam Fox to the Carolina Hurricanes for Noah Hannafin and Elias Lindholm. And from day one, it was clear that both sides were going to be benefiting greatly. As Carolina was receiving that true number one pairing defender in Hamilton, as Hamilton was a serious Norris candidate this season until he broke his leg. As he put up 40 points in only 47 games, alongside of playing a great defensive game. Michael Furlan, who had a great season before leaving to free agency, and Adam Fox who unfortunately would again opt to not sign, but they did receive a second and third round pick from the Rangers. And because of Hamilton, that added star power, Carolina now has one of the best blue lines in the entire NHL. They are definitely missing the scoring from Lindholm, but with the emergence of Svechnikov, you definitely understand their willingness to part ways with Elias. And as for Calgary, Elias Lindholm would have his coming out party last year as he was a stud and broke out with 78 points and really helped Calgary's team dynamic as his presence the last season seemed to really help and elevate their entire offense. And the Flames had also received Noah Hannafin who has served as a great top four defender. He didn't have the best season this year but he's still only 23 and has the upside of a top pairing defenseman. Next we have the Braden Shen deal. Because on June 23rd, 2017, Brain Shen was traded to the St. Louis Blues for a 2017 and 2018 first round pick and Yori Laterra. And Brain Shen, after he was traded, would have a breakout season registering a career high 70 points. And of course, Shen was a major piece for the St. Louis Blues 2018 Stanley Cup victory. And today is still a foundational piece for the team, on top of being a rock on the defensive side. 
And as for the fires, Yori Laterra turned out to be a bust for the fires, as he'd only put up 8 points in 63 games and would soon leave to the KHL. But for the Flyers who have an aging core in guys like Voracek and Giroux, they were able to land two blue chip prospects with their draft picks. As they went out to draft Morgan Frost, who looks like a potential top 6 scorer, if not a first line star, and Joel Farabee, who is that gritty goal scoring winger who has first line upside. And so the St. Louis Blues would receive a major piece that helped them win their cup, and the Flyers would receive two very important future pieces. Next, we have Tony D'Angelo. And when this trade happened, it was a massive wild card. Because the New York Rangers were giving up on a legitimate number one goaltender in Antti Ranta, who was coming off three elite seasons in a row, and he had definitely proven his consistency. And Derek Stepan, who was a proven top six center, who had a fantastic career with the Rangers, as he averaged around 60 points for seven seasons. And the Rangers would receive a first round pick that was the 7th overall pick in the 2018 NHL Draft, but the wild card was D'Angelo. As he showed all the upside of a top pairing number 1 defenseman, on top of having the production and numbers to back it up. But at this time, he was still demonstrating exactly why he fell so far in his draft year, as he had a quote unquote rumored, terrible attitude. Which is why the Tampa Bay Lightning, who drafted him in the first round, would trade him only two years later for a second round pick. But fortunately for the Rangers, D'Angelo has flourished. He's still up to his very controversial antics, especially if you're on Twitter. Don't even go look at it, it's pretty terrible. But his on ice play speaks louder, as he put up a very impressive 15 goals, 53 points this season, and is showing all the potential to be a 70 80 point top two pairing defenseman which alone is sufficient value. And they'd also received the 7th overall pick in the 2017 NHL Draft, which they'd used to draft Leas Anderson, who has been very disappointing, but again, he's only 20 years old and can definitely still rebound. And so the Coyotes would receive a number one starting goaltender and Stepan, who has been a great piece on their team. And the Rangers have received a potential top two pairing defender and Elias Anderson, who could develop into a top six player. And lastly, we have the Mark Stone trade, who was traded in 2019 alongside of Tobias Lindbergh for Eric Branstrom, Oscar Lindbergh, and a second round pick. And since being traded, Mark Stone has reinforced the fact that he's one of the best, if not the best, two-way winger in the entire NHL. And Stone has been the perfect complementary piece to their existing core. Which definitely wasn't a guarantee because when you acquire a guy like Mark Stone who is the face of the franchise in Ottawa, you never really know what happens when you put him on a team that has better depth and more star power, but Mark Stone has been great. As he put up a very impressive 63 points in 65 games this season and is a tremendous playoff performer. As he's gritty, he can score goals and shut down every top line. But there's really not much more you can ask for. And as for Ottawa, to be honest, the value of Branstrom at this point doesn't come close to Stone. However, Branstrom has the tool set in the mold to be the next great offensive defenseman in the NHL. He's still far away from that today, but he's only 20 and has demonstrated his puck moving ability in the NHL and it's just time before he brings that to the NHL. But when you take the context that Mark Stone wasn't going to resign in Ottawa and the fact they got back Branstrom, on top of the fact that trading Stone was their final piece in the rebuild, a rebuild that led to Ottawa to having two out of the top five picks in a very good and deep draft, which has the potential to completely change the fate of the Ottawa franchise, both Ottawa and Vegas benefited greatly from this transaction. But anyways guys, can you think of any win-win trade scenarios that your team has ever made? If so, comment down below and tell me what happened, I'd love to know. And press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. We are so close to 25,000 subscribers. Just insane, guys. Um, you know, I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse over and over again. But the support on this channel has just been amazing. If not, just literally life-changing. So I do want to say it, um, that I really appreciate all the support. And 25,000 subscribers, guys. Just insane. Again, I had a goal of 5,000 heading to this year. And... You know, we're about eight months in and we're about to do it times five. Just insane. But anyways, guys, hope all you guys are doing well. See you guys later.